more than likely going to do it. Okay. Good. 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 Uh, call the meeting to order. Thank you for attending the special meeting, September 20th. Uh, Flores? Councilor Bello? Here. Councilor Hammond? Here. Councilor Hurley? Here. Councilor Latina? Here. Councilor Martino? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Berry? Here. And Mayor Montaneri? Here. Thank you. Uh, before the uh, discussion, I want to just uh, ask for a moment of silence on behalf of John Sassenti, who passed away this past week. Everyone knows John, I'm sure, from his service in our school system. Thank you. Jeff? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mike O'Neill, Finance Directors, here this evening. Uh, to go over the details of the numbers, I just want to explain what's on the podium for you this evening. You have three documents. The first one says preliminary draft at the top and has a plethora of numbers on it. I will let Mr. O'Neill describe that one. The second document has a cover page with a small graph on it. That was prepared by Fauna Eller, the town assessor, and it's a uh, sampling of other communities and what they've done with motor vehicle taxes. As you in the backup two pages shows you the the uh, the detail of that chart, and then the third page is the requested opinion from the town attorney on what to levy for a motor vehicle mill rate. Uh, the final conclusion paragraph on page two recommends 32, with the option that if it's modified, uh, we could send out a supplemental tax bill. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be uh, time to review that letter in detail this evening. Having said that, I'll let Mr. O'Neill describe this chart on this page. Good evening, Mike O'Neill, Finance Director. Um, so this was prepared by my office this afternoon. There's two tables there for you. I'll talk about the, the table on the top first. <coughs> That just presents uh, three scenarios of for mill rates and the resulting tax levies based on the grand list. Uh, the first line is the budget as adopted this past May, um, and it just shows the mill rate of 39.77, and if you recall, we capped the motor vehicle rate at uh, 32, reflecting the law uh, in effect. And it shows the split of the levy um, between real estate, personal property, and then motor vehicle based on the two different mill rates. Um, the total tax levy and then the column all the way to the right is just the shift, the impact of capping the motor vehicle rate and how that, what that does by having a lower mill rate is, is it, it shifts the incidence of the tax onto uh, real estate and personal property owners and away from motor vehicle owners. Mm -hmm. So the first row is uh, the budget, budget that's in effect. The second line is changing, uh, assuming a 37 mil cap on motor vehicles. And you can see what that does is two things. It, uh, it increases the mill rate on real estate and personal property or I'm sorry, it decreases it. It increases uh, the mill rate on motor vehicles, decreases the mill rate on real estate and personal property to 39.31. And you can see all the way to the right that that shift onto real estate and personal property owners is reduced from a million, from roughly a million three to uh, $380,000. And then lastly, that the last example, last scenario there is no cap. So that's just the same mill rate on all property. And um, in that case, uh, the, the mill rate would be 39.12 based on the current budget. And there'd be obviously no shift between uh, types of property. So Nicole. the guidance from, from uh, both town manager and Jack Bradley is to retain the 32 in the budget at this point based on representation. Um, I don't think we need to necessarily vote, but just have commentary on that with the direction provided by council. 
uh, to either support that position, which seems to be what's being recommended, and get the bills out. So we address the issue from Monday night that Mike O'Neill shared with us. So discussion on this? I just have Donna. a question. So this is the assumption based on what's in place today with the budget that was passed and the statute related to um, motor vehicle tax. Correct. Um, what other assumptions could impact this? So in light of the fact that there's not a budget, in light of the fact that it looks like we're getting closer to October 1st, for a new executive order to take place. And the last one um, hit us pretty hard, the one that's in place today, the revised one. So what's that impact on this? Because <coughs> won't that also have to be taken into account related to um, you know, if that revenue isn't coming in to the town, we adopted the budget. So we're going to have to make some, I know, understand big choices, but. Well, it's $12 <coughs> million worth of choices. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But in no budget scenario pre prepared by either the governor's office outside of the executive order or by House or by the Democrats or the Republicans had that significant a cut, a cut. Right, and we understand wide. that part of it was to bring people to the table. Right. And as Mr. O'Neill stated last time, our <clears throat> revenue analysis, this is really a revenue exercise as a cash flow, for cash flow purposes, we, this is based upon not getting any revenue from the state okay. for the foreseeable future. Now, if it comes to pass that we're never going to get that, <clears throat> that's a whole new conversation. And let me know how that one goes. It'll be so, um, <laughs> so I'm thinking, Donna, the 32 is the most conservative message uh, method right now today. It gives us the least amount of risk, if you will, for putting the bills out today, knowing that if, if, if they uh, put it to 37 or remove the cap, each one of those would allow us to make a special appropriation at some point in the future, but this gives us the cash flow at the most conservative decision today. You know, if, if the governor's executive order <coughs> kicks in October 1, we're going to be coming back together to talk about at least the first two payments, uh, I would think, and the impact on the budget and cuts and decisions, and the board will have to be involved in all that. Um, so we're kind of taking this one step at a time, obviously, uh, but. Uh, as much as I'd like to put it at 37, knowing we've gotten guidance that that's probably what it's going to be, it, it, it just, there's not enough support for it, which not doesn't open up, in my mind, the possibility that a significant number of residents will take a legal challenge because the books say 32. So we'll take that guidance, I think, uh, as much as I'd like to move it up. But at the end of the day, even though this is a temporary step, it accommodates in, at any level what Mike was talking about with respect to cash flow. So at least we yeah, address no, that one that. problem. I but just I, had I to think it's coming. Bring it. No, I, you're 100% okay. correct. <clears throat> so <clears throat> October 2nd, then we'd start talking about uh, if things like came to be that we're not getting any money, then we start talking because I think that's our first meeting in October. <clears throat> um, I, you know, I'm thinking that we've already had some discussion with Mike Emmett about, because, I mean, this is an ECS impact, obviously. The governor's, the governor's uh, uh, whatever you want to word it, is only a, it, it's his only ability to cut is at ECS, the municipal aid. So that means if that happens October 1, our first and only uh, approach, I would suspect, if we maintain our current tax levy and uh, budget, is we have to deal with it at the, at the school level. You know, that probably means closing schools, you know, 50, 60, 70 teachers laid off. Um, you know, who knows? I mean, that's it. it but that discussion, with respect to short answer, Mike, is that we've begun that already with the board. Uh, I've talked to Bobby, talked to Mike Emma, and I said, you got to start. And that's only two weeks away. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Uh, so is he going to come down to talk to the council? Absolutely needs okay. to. 
absolutely must and the board must. Um, I think it's pretty likely from what I heard today. I mean, I'm sure you all heard the same thing. The governor is saying it's not likely to have a, a budget passed before October 1st uh, with all sides involved. That's the distressing to hear, but if you hear it that way, you got to believe it. So, Paul, do we have a meeting in place for our conversation with the Board of Ed, or have you asked them, <clears throat> excuse me, for any information by a certain date? No, I have not. But by the end of this week, we will have a date with them separate from our October 2nd meeting, for sure. Good. And we'll schedule that, obviously, with everybody. <coughs> the 32 solves the cash flow issue through the end of the year? It does. It gets us to January. Yeah. We will have to come back at some point to decide a mill rate for the second real estate bill, which has not gone out. And that has to be a conversation sooner than later. That, obviously, you've given the three scenarios here using the 32 today, but that could change if any one of those. So we have to re-vote on the mill rate in the budget when that happens, right? You're going to have to either go with your current mill rate or adjust it. Okay. And I don't know what mechanism is available for adjusting it at this point. But or just mail it out to get the cash because as of you know this this action tonight's going to get you to December. You need second half real estate in, to in get place. you past that. Yeah. yeah. And what is the date that those bills need to be discussed today? Ask it. What's your lag time? What's the time? There's I would assume again it's a week, you know, to, from when we tell the billing company to when we're in a position to put the bills in the mail. I would assume, I don't know the precise answer, but given that everyone sends their bills in January, there's a lot more volume in December. So I'd assume at least two weeks, you know, that we'd want to, we'd want to know in early December uh, what we're going to do so that we can kind of get in line, so to speak, with quality data. So the bills go out the last week in December and they're due Feb February 1st. That's right. Mike, of you and Jeff talked about language in this CARP uh, mailing yes. that explains what is happening here because it's so unusual. There'll yeah. be a note on it that say there may be a supplemental bill that comes out. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Mike, bro. Can just before that supplemental bill goes out, can the full council review that note in wording? Well, we're not doing a supplemental bill. Or not that supplement in, yeah, let me the take language that back. In, the, in this bill, yeah, the that, 32 yeah. mil bill. Well, it's a very, what's it, it's just going to say this may be, there may be a supplemental bill. It's yes, a very small it's piece on the. Literally, it's that shaded band in the middle. That's, okay. this is the bill that we sent out um, in June, you know, and so it would look, it would look similar. There'd be a, a, an amount based on presumably 32 mils whatever you decide tonight and then nothing and you know no second payment indicated and then the message in the middle okay. I agree with Mike I'd like to see the message I think we should have some explanation yeah that this 32 reflects the fact that there is not a state budget and we're honoring the current uh, past bill from two years ago uh, well we, we don't have a limited space and these things are going to the printer Monday uh, uh, well, I'm not suggesting war and peace but I, I think we need well, to have some language in there to explain why tomorrow. I mean, we need to decide tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think them. you could circulate yeah. that in the morning. We can weigh in. I don't think everybody needs to weigh in, but I, I have the same thought. I want to see it just because I think this explanation we owe our residents. Well, some, what do you what do you want it to say? What what message do you want to send? Because that, that this that uh, I'm paraphrasing, but I, mm -hmm. this attached bill reflects uh, a mill rate for <coughs> autos that has been capped based on legislation from previous years and may very well change requiring a second appropriation just giving you a heads up something like that I would even expand that and you know given the current budget situation out of the state capital or you know given the current state budget um, or lack of a state budget um, this is preliminary you know mill rate set at 32 subject to change upon uh, adoption of a state budget something like that I think that 
the message that was there on the June, the bill that was sent in June captures, Sim okay. captures both of yeah. those, you know, all of what, what's been said on it. Okay. I, I have another question, and this is kind of related to the next discussion that we have to have pending whatever happens October 1st is it's related to the MDC and Hartford because I would want to make it's hard for me to make an assumption but I would assume if they're going to go if they're going to file for bankruptcy that would have that date would also be significant for them to make that decision because they did say that they could make the October payment but if something is not done by that date that may push them into something sooner so what does that what's the impact to the member towns i think we need to be prepared to have some of that discussion because we didn't include that the legislature did pass <clears throat> amendments to the mdc charter that allows for two things in the event of a non-payment by a member town the first is that state payments to that municipality will be withheld until those payments are made or will be sent to the MDC in lieu of those payments mailed to the to the member city the second thing is it also extends the amount of time the MDC can issue revenue anticipation obligations to cover those shortfalls until that town can be collected from okay so it's a this, little better it, it took it took the issue that came those were two direct results of uh, the re broad resistance by member municipalities right. against picking up that piece gave them greater flexibility in their in their charter so I, I think we haven't had a discussion about this in a long time with the MDC but we essentially took the, off the table municipality participation to cover Hartford if okay you will. And, and obviously as long as that's the case Hartford because they're going to take more money away from them to pay the water bill but that, that goes back to pressure to bear on the state to say, okay, even if they don't give them the additional funds they need, it's going to worsen their scenario because the MDC is protected. Okay. I just wanted to bring it up because no, that's so another, you know, like a cement lock yep. hanging Jody. around our necks. Jody. Um, I just want to clarify, they passed it, but it still has to be implemented. So without a state budget and an implementer bill, it doesn't really exist, right? I believe it was a separate piece of legislation. I do too. Was, it was outside not, the budget. It's outside the budget. The yeah. MDC is not relying on the budget for that. It was a bill that amended the MC charter. Okay. Thank you. Tony. Just one question for uh, Mike. Uh, the bills, you know, that go out in December, will that be soon enough? We have enough cash flow on hand with this uh, car tax thing to carry you until those January bills do come in? Yes, at 32 mils, we would have enough. Okay. So again, I don't think this requires a vote by the council, but just a confirmation of direction to Jeff and Mike to proceed. And uh, I'll just uh, continue to watch the news. Any other questions, concerns for the order? So please check your emails in the morning because we will send that message out early with the expectation that whatever iteration is available <laughs> in the afternoon will go to dinner. So is this like a wedding for speak your peace or forever hold your peace or whatever? No. By 10. <laughs> is that good? By 10 o'clock? <laughs> enough time responses? <laughs> No, I would like no responses. Well, that would be good. Jeff, I will, I will I'm going to let Mike wordsmith it because he's better We're going to trust well, that he's better at being succinct than I am. I got it. <laughs> he's got I'm it. going to give it to you when I'm done. Mike, thank you. Appreciate it. And someone else had a question? No, no, no quite. You get our, for lack of a better term, gist of what we want to say. I mean, yes. You know, I think the, the public way. is smart enough to realize that a lack of a state budget would impact their tax bills but you know sometimes you got to lay it out for plain do you have the English. verbiage right there of what was sent on the property taxes? i do what could you read that? do you want to read it yeah sure. would you mind sure the state budget has not been adopted at the time your tax bill was printed the implications for this situation are that it is likely that we may need to send out a supplemental tax bill or adjust your tax levy to address any reductions or additions in municipal aid once the state budget is adopted. 
Current state law does not allow municipalities to assess a mill rate above 32 mills on motor vehicles effective July 1st. Therefore, the tax bill for your motor vehicle will not be issued until the mill rate situation is resolved by the state legislature. You will have 30 days to pay the tax bill for your motor vehicle once the bill is issued. So we'll have to tweak that last couple of sentences. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah the first part, I think. The rest of it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That sounds good. Glad you read it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Jeff, I think. Reverend Deeds. Okay. Motion to adjourn, please. Motion so to adjourn. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.